you check out an average Nigerian student cannot speak or write good English. What do you think is the cause? Government, the students, or even the teachers? Well, as for me, I would say everyone is to be blamed. We all are the cause of our problem because we all have a role to play. If you play your role as a student, you will find no reason or you find no difficulties in understanding certain things which are important to you. As a teacher, the teachers are to be blamed in some areas because so most teachers also propagate uh, laziness in the minds of students. How do you think they propagate that laziness? Uh, well, you see examination today uh, is always uh, based on uh, assistance, support, you know. And if teachers refuse to give assistance and support to students, I think they will sit tight and then burn candles to get a cube and understand. By so doing, English will not be a problem. Oh, so you're trying to say that, let's say the teachers themselves make it mandatory by not collecting any, any side money or some bribes students will be forced to sit up yeah i think this will go a long way to assist students in then uh, reading and then getting much prepared for their examinations and then uh, studies now majorly this is a very big problem because it cannot be it, it can never be eradicated but a major way to do this is by putting more effort in doing what you're doing i think and uh, many are not enlightened are not educated about the importance of certain things english as we all see is a major is the major official language in Nigeria because uh, Nigeria is known to be uh, multi-ethnic and then uh, we have different languages and these are culture we not I would not say we should neglect our cultures and tradition all in the name of propagating English sure. but we should tell them the importance of both the local language and the the official language and then uh, majorly uh, the language of teaching is also a problem of understanding many school today, many institutions today, is, they, they, they lack and they, they, they achieve no success in, uh, in all their effort as a result of a poor medium of expression. By the time you go to school, take, speaking a very big um, vocabulary to students who does not even know, understand a simple English, how would you expect that student to understand or comprehend what you're saying? Exactly. Well, if you can, if we can inculcate the act of using our native language to educate people about the English language, it will go a long way to breed the understanding and the spoken of English. Uh, from statistics, we understand that about 900,000 of Nigerian youth sit for jam. And only 300,000 of them are given admissions into our Nigerian government-owned institution. I just want to know, what's your, what's your take on this one? Um, well, for me, it's not totally JAM's, um, how do I say it? Not totally JAM's fault. Okay. If the students prepare well enough, they will get the cut-up mark and then get admission into school. That's one. I have, like my daughter wrote, wrote JAM, she made up the cut-up mark, she surpassed it. But then her SSC is one subject is outstanding and it's not and she's not eligible for admission. Do you understand? And it's not you don't look at it from just one perspective. Look at the students also. Some students don't even get to the cut-off mark. So what can Jam do? Jam is not going to force anybody to give admission. Do you understand? So I think that's uh, going forward, Ma. I just want to ask, don't you feel since Jam maybe probably already have this number of provision, mm -hmm. why didn't they sell out that number of form? Instead of, you know, of look at the margin, extra, yes. yes. Extra forms, yes, that's true. But you know that even if they sold out, if we look at it on this angle, if they sold out a particular number of forms, it means that they are limiting students. If, if some students are eligible for admission they are actually limiting people from getting admission into school so give and take you either take you write the jam prepare for it well and make your grades but right now there are other options like my daughter is writing a levels at least if she cannot get in with the ssc and she has a problem with um, uh, one subject there's other alternatives and that's why there are other alternatives to jam 
Do you understand? So there's diploma, there's everything. People should not limit themselves. I think we are in a digital age and there are other routes to institutions to higher level. Um, from recent uh, statistics, we understand that about 900,000 of Nigerian youth sit for JAMB and only about 300,000 of them have been admitted into our government-owned institution. I just want to know, what's your, what's your perception of this, sir? Well, um, one thing you should know that um, the government is out there to make money, whichever way they can, you understand? So it doesn't really matter how many from the bringer, because their main purpose is to make money, because they need to pay their fat salaries and every other thing. So it's, it's kind of an exploitation on behalf of, on the side of the students, because when you only have 300,000 spaces available and you're bringing out red, what does that say? It's simply you're trying to defraud them of their money and so, but the most important thing, they're trying to make money to pay their fat salaries, so that's why they do all those things. But it's unfortunate that everybody wants to go to school. But it's, it's that kind of um, thing, that brain, that kind of mindset we have here in Africa, because over there, there are many other things you can do. You can go to school of music, you can go to school of acting, you can go to many other schools. You don't have to always, nobody, not everybody has to go to university, if you understand what I'm saying. You can learn other trades, you understand. Many of the world celebrities we have today, they didn't go to universities. They went to school of music, school of arts, school of the likes of Denzel Washington. Most of them went to school of arts, not really like jam, universities and all that. But here yeah, we have a straightforward thinking. Yeah, primary school, secondary school, university, I'm going to look for a job. You understand? You can go to a school of entrepreneurship and create your own job, you understand? So in as much as we don't open our mindset to think of other ways of making it in life, we will continue to fall prey for all the governors, all the government um, devices. From statistics, we understand that 900 of Nigerian students sit for JAMP, and only 300,000 of them have been admitted into a government-owned institution. I want to know, as a student, well, what do you think is the problem? All right, um, considering the failure in JAM, I really think um, the school, <coughs> I mean, secondary school really has a lot to do about that, because um, we, and also JAM as well, as a body on its own, really do have a lot to do, because in the aspect of school, you really need to ensure that these people really know what, um, what they are being there for. You know, some because most of those people who are SSC students, they are not really interested in academics anymore. Most of them are, you know, chasing their only chasing their dream, you know, way back in school. So, I mean, spending our time like born candle read overnight is no longer uh, thing people like students of secondary school really want to do. So, and the aspect of jam too, we we understand that uh, most of those uh, questions have been. Um, People get hold of those past questions before the day of exam. So this discourages a lot of students. They can't read. They don't want to read. So they, they, most of them who have money, they always believe, okay, we can buy that and we can go to special centers and register. So it is really not necessarily reading overnight and trusting in themselves to pass. So in that case, those who really do not have interest in reading, who want to go to um, special center, at the end of the day, what happens is some of them, they, they have been disappointed. And writing that exam hall, they don't know what to write anymore. They've been disappointed. So that is um, my own opinion. That so they really need jam. Really need to, you know, make this strict. If there's someone in jam who is selling out those uh, questions, you really need to stop because it's not encouraging at all. You know, from statistics, we understand that about 900,000 of Nigerian youth sit for jam, okay. and only about 300,000 of them. Are, are admitted into our Nigerian own institutions. So I, I just want to have your opinion. What do, what do you think of this? What do you have to say? Hey, what I have to say is that I don't, sometimes I don't understand the jam people. Because when you know that you cannot accommodate, you cannot give a lot of them admission, why are you selling form for them in the one sense? Because a lot of people will write jam three times and four times, five times, and see yet, you will still not give them admission. To me, it is not good. They should please do something about it so that a lot of people can see go to school. A lot of people have already given up already because they said since JAM is not giving the admission and they don't want to go to Polynesian, so they are not, you know, it's not just good. JAM people, I will beg them, I will still tell them that they should please try and help people so that the people will not keep staying at home.
So that's my own view. Okay, uh, how many times did you sit for your jump? Like three times. So recently, statistics shows that about 900,000 of Nigerian youths sit for jump. And at the end of the day, only about 300,000 of them have been admitted into Nigerian government-owned institution. Uh, I want to know your opinion about this. No, I don't really have much to say about that. But what I just know is that the, the problem there is, most times, is the student. Okay. Yes, the student on their own, because now there is corruption everywhere. Like writing the why I cannot have. Most students just believe, um, let me just go to school, let me just go there. I just want to go there just for fun or stuff like that. So they're not even prepared already. Okay. Because now, if you're looking at the way JAM prepared their examination and the way they conduct their examination now, okay. it's just for CBT. There's, there's, there is no lot of um, corruption or for them to shit in the exam hall. Okay. So most students just come out in all these, there, there's no flying colors, like really. And Nigerian kind of institutions, like Kepatek, for example, they can't just admit students when they know their capacity is not even enough for them to admit. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I think that is the problem. Ma, you realize that an average Nigerian student cannot speak or write good English. This is really a big issue. You see on social media how people mess up English. And then you wonder, did they even go to school? I saw one of recent, the, the lady wrote, or the, yeah, the lady wrote, I am I'm happy for being a cops, C-O-R-P-S-E, which is, <laughs> and she was thanking God for being, going to the youth, youth um, camp. You can imagine, she messed it up and it was a big issue. This issue has, re, has, has started and has continued over time. What do you think is the cause? Do you think it's the student? Do you think it's the government? Or do you think it's the teachers? Anyway, um, the one you just said now, I will not use it against her because it might be, Either um, she wants to abbreviate it, okay. or it's a minor mistake. I can't use that to judge okay. her, okay? It can happen to anybody. It might be typing error. But coming to what you just asked about um, academic qualification of students, that they can't be able to defend it. To me, I feel it's two ways. It's both school and the student as well. And most especially or importantly foundation level for the foundation level of any child is very very important and is paramount once you miss it in nursery primary school you've missed it and these days our education level from primary school is an appalli i'm talking of public schools before you be able to pay for a that high unquote standard um, or better primary school, you'll be talking of over 150, 200,000 or thereabouts mm. in Lakey and other axes. Other axes but talk of those areas where we have less privileged, average and medium families that can't be able to afford it. I have to start to say now that our governments also should equally look into most of the private schools people are opening these days. Because some of these private schools, some teachers, I would say, are not really teachers. Meaning that some of them did not go through teaching practice of those days. And because of lack of, un because of unemployment, lack of job, the labor market is full. A BSc holder can pick up a teaching job, sure. which you know that um, that BSc holder technically was not trained to be a teacher. I could remember those days we went to school. We know about TTC. I don't know if anybody here no, knows about TTC. TTC, Teachers Training College. Okay. We don't have that anymore. And Teachers Training College is basically for primary school. And also secondary, I think so. So for me, that I know there's one in Nibonise, TTC Nibonise, probably in Anambra State. Okay. But those schools have been closed down by wow, governments. Been closed down. Yes. How many centuries now? Has it been a long time? Uh, it has been quite a long time. Okay. Yeah. So I think uh, we have to go back to drawing board. I mean, the governments and the also public schools. Because if you look at in Lagos, for example, public schools, let me just say, um, Private schools are more than public, than public schools. Yes. 
everybody wants to open school. Their target is not basically to get those children. Their, their target is money. Money, yes. That's their target is money. Some teachers, I am sorry to say this, is not qualified. My mother is a class teacher raised to a prince, um, um, headmistress. She was actually my primary three teacher. Wow. My dad was a headmaster those days. I'm talking of 70s and 80s. You had so, a around. Yeah, so I want to tell you that their sacrifice is nothing to write home about. They are very, very eager and always to teach, even with little amount. Mm. Those days, my mom would pick the, the, the will I say, the average student in the class to give them free lesson. That doesn't happen these days. Everybody is about money. money. It doesn't happen these days. So the, the, their sacrifice is just too much, was too much then. So these days, you hardly see that. Our public school, I, that's why I said it's both ways. Once you get the foundation, once from primary school, that child, you impact that knowledge in that child, the child grows with it. That is why in some children in these high brown schools, they are better. Sure. But I also want to pinpoint something. You know public schools. I remember you, um, you have parents that put their children in public schools, then they put them for evening lessons. What do you think about that too? <laughs> what, is that not meant to polish them to, to complement the public school? No, no, no. The thing is that you're even overstretching that child. Because after the day, the child wakes up some 5 o'clock, sure. some as early as 4.30, mm -hmm. to start preparing for school. And that child is meant to close maybe 2 o'clock. Then due to lack of, uh, what I say, uh, hardship in the country, mother is working, father is working, they will leave that child for like 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, because of, you just put that child in the lesson to be able to wait for you till you finish close from your work and pick that child. And tomorrow again, the child wake up again 4.30 or 5 o'clock. So there's no rest. The brain is not functioning well. You think you are doing that child good. Actually, you're not doing that child good. You are doing yourself good. Because you know you can't be able to cope, shuttle between your office, pick the child, go back to your office, and uh, and all that. So they have to compulsorily register that child for after school lesson. So you would say that instead of putting that child in an after school lesson for the psychological well being and mental well being of the child, it is better you should gather that money together and put the child in a private school. You know the, the thing is that what what amazes me is that during those days we went to school. I went to public school, village public school for that matter, and uh, the children of these days are not that better than us. Do you understand? So you not ask yourself because that time we close by one o'clock. In fact, we started closing by twelve. That's government, federal government. Yes, we started closing by twelve. You get to school for eight. Yeah, you go to school eight o'clock. You get to school eight o'clock. We close twelve. From twelve, they move to twelve thirty. From twelve, 12 I think I closed last one o'clock. That was now when I closed two in school. Close two. Now they close two three, and parents will extend it to five six for the child to wait until he or she closes from office to come and pick that child. And when we get home, we play. You know, we play, stretch ourselves and all that. We do some minor work at home and that, and go back to lesson. But these days, the, these children, they don't have that, but they, they don't benefit at all because parents are struggling to make ends meet, to be able to raise that money, that 150 and 200,000, as the case may be in different schools, to pay their school fees. So I think if we have adequate public school and teachers can help us to go back to old school days, things will be better. You can hear, and I absolutely agree. Parents, please, stop stressing your children. It's for your own good. You are, you are hustling for the child, definitely. Yeah. So why don't you stop it and make and sure... I also want to add that um, some parents also should mind the kind of people that move with their children. Because it also affects the child's academic. When the child comes back from school, they throw their bag outside, went to where the mother is selling and start playing and playing and playing. In fact, let me tell you honestly, I just pray that our children, God will help them because Amen. at times if, I'm, if I close from work and I'm, I'm in the market buying things, I will see children, their mother with their supermarket and all that thing. They are teaching their children lesson inside the shop. With the noise, one hand you are holding the child's hand, one hand you are turning to a customer. So how would that child learn? So the problem is two ways. It's both parents, parents students, parents. and where I will blame students is when they get to secondary school and university. Because when they, when, they, when they are in primary school, they are still under the perfect, they should be under the perfect care of their parents. Mm -hmm. The mother should be able to mold that child 
very well. But when a child gets to secondary school, she should be able to read on her own. So it, the, the foundation you give that child from primary school that will make that child to sit down by herself and read. And secondary school. As, yes, and read. But you see, most at times, they don't do it. So, so I blame those in secondary school for not reading adequately to make sure they meet up with their academic. Then in primary school, I said foundation, the teachers, I blame them more. But in secondary school, I blame especially the teachers, sorry, the students, then the teachers. So even after having a basic foundation, make sure you also develop yourself in the secondary school. Thank you very much for your time. You tackled the question well. Thank you very much.